why when Jesus is in Galilee does the scripture say he is going up to Jerusalem when he is clearly going south I notice this is consistent throughout the word <laughs> well just for interest sake I'm always at loggerheads of my wife are we going up to let's say Durban when you're living in the Cape or are you going down are you reckoning it by sea level or are you reckoning it on a map on a map and that makes it very confusing but besides that there's a very interesting uh, analogy in the Bible no matter where you come from it always says that you went up to Jerusalem mm. and if you left Jerusalem you went down and that has, besides the geographical, yeah. sea level mm. application because Jerusalem is on a hill, right? Okay. Besides the, that application, it also has a spiritual mm. application. When you go to God, you are always up. It's a ladder. Mm. Mm. And Christ is the ladder. And he encourages you to go up. So you can never go down to Jerusalem. You can only go up up to Jerusalem. In fact, if you were on Mount Everest, you'd still be going up, up to Jerusalem, Jerusalem because you would have to go down into the valley and then go up to <laughs> Jerusalem. So no matter what you do, yeah. you will go up to Jerusalem. Okay. But, uh, you know, Martin, when you said that this was one of the questions, I immediately thought of the parable of the Good Samaritan because the parable of the Good Samaritan deals with this question of up and down in in various contexts and i thought perhaps you know yeah i know i know it's not directly in the question but it is part of the question so i thought as an example we should actually look at the parable mm. and see where the up and the down is in this in this issue so if we go to luke chapter 10 jesus is telling the parable and he says and behold a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him saying master what shall i do to inherit eternal life and he said unto him what is written in the law how readest thou and he answering said that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. So here is this uh, expert in the law of God, and he is trying to trip up Jesus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, this was their favorite game. I don't know why they never learned that they lost every <laughs> single round. Yeah, they, they were trying to catch him out every time. And they could never do it, mm. right? Uh, should we pay taxes? You know, if he, if he says, yes, you should pay taxes, then the Pharisees will go crazy. And if he says no, then the Romans will go crazy. So we're going to trip him up. Either way, he's going to get it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> And then no, for no. Here's a coin. Whose head is on this? Whose face is on that? Render unto Caesar what is due unto Caesar, and unto God what is due unto God. Checkmate. Yeah. <laughs> Checkmate. They don't have anything. Nothing. So in any case, this is a very interesting introduction, because again, we have the law of Moses, which is the first five books of the of the Bible. And then very specifically, you have the summary of the Ten Commandments, mm. which is you shall love God and you shall love your fellow man. Mm. On this hang, hang the law and the prophets, right? No, not this replaces the law. Correct. So this is the summation of all things. And when he quoted the summary of what it means to obey and love God. And Jesus said to him, Thou hast answered right. This do, mm -hmm. and thou shalt live. Now the next question would be, okay, how? 
good question. It's always the question, yeah. right? But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, Who is my neighbor? That's interesting, right? Yeah. And uh, even Cain said, Am I my brother's keeper? Yeah. Fact of the matter is, he is his brother's keeper. We, have we are same, all our brother's yes, keeper. We've got that same question still today. This, these questions don't go away. And who is my neighbor? And who is my brother? Mm -hmm. And is there a difference between the brother and the neighbor? Yes. Yeah. The brother is in the church. Uh -huh. The and brother maybe. is in the church. And you have to treat him differently to mm -hmm. what you treat someone outside the church. Mm -hmm. For example, in the Bible, you were allowed to ask usury of someone out of the church. Yeah. But you weren't allowed to have usury, in other words, interest, interest. Mm. for someone in the church. Correct. So the way you treated them is, is different, yes. right? Even the way you treat them if the you see something that's not right. Yes, correct. So he's wanting to justify himself because the Jews, of course, uh, thought they were the chosen race. Mm. Only they were going to heaven, no one else. Everybody else, you know, was goyim. Yeah. So who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, and I like the way he does this. Isn't it amazing? He doesn't get into an argument. Mm. He tells a story. But the story is so amazing. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now, Martin, you have to be very careful when you go down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Jericho was a cursed city. Mm. And the man who was to rebuild it was to be cursed. Yes. Even from his oldest to his youngest. Yeah. He will set up the gates with the oldest and uh, lay the foundation with the oldest yeah. and set and the gates with his youngest. So it was a cursed city. So this is a this is a very, very important principle. A certain man, it's very nondescript. It's not a brother, it's not a neighbor. A neighbor, it's anybody. Mm -hmm. Anybody. A certain man includes the whole of humanity. Yes. Went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now, how many of us went down from the heavenly ideal to the cursed city. Mm -hmm. uh, all of us. <laughs> <laughs> you qualify? Yes, definitely. All right. So you're a certain man. Yep. Do I qualify? I'm sure you do. Absolutely. I'm a certain man. I went down from the high calling that God had for humanity to the very depth of degradation. Depth yeah. of degradation. Nothing was to remain of that city. It's a type of the destruction of the end of the world, mm -hmm. right? And there he fell amongst thieves. Now, what did they rob you of? The everlasting life. They robbed you of everything, including mm -hmm. your everlasting life, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the devil was a liar from the beginning, and he stole you from Christ. Yeah. So you ended up amongst thieves when you went down. And they stripped him of his raiment. Christ, righteousness. When you go down from Jerusalem to Jericho, that's the end of your robe of righteousness, right? So all of humanity had been stripped of their raiment when they fell amongst these thieves that robbed them of the righteousness of Christ. We must be very careful. The scripture as this question says, this person noticed that throughout Scripture there is this constant play upon going up and going down. Mm -hmm. And that's why I thought, you know, this parable 
brings ah, ah, explains it so beautifully. So all of us are in this position. We have been stripped of our robes of righteousness. We have fallen amongst thieves. And we are wounded. What kind of wound do we have? It's spiritual, emotional. Yes, it's a deadly wound. Mm. It's a wound that will lead to death. Right? Yep. So we are wounded to death. And departed, leaving him half dead. So basically, that's our condition. Walking around on this planet, wounded to death, naked, stripped of all righteousness, living amongst liars and thieves, and we're half dead on the way to being totally dead. Mm. And by chance, <laughs> you know, when I read the scripture, I always have to smile, because in the scripture, nothing is by, by chance. chance. No, Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing, whether it's bad or whether it's good. If it's bad, God permitted it. If it's good, God introduced it, right? Yes. So by chance, there came what? Down. Down. He mm. didn't go up. No. A certain priest that way. Now, what condition should this priest have been in? Uh, enlightened one. An enlightened one. What's he doing going down? Mm. <laughs> it's not a good thing. So how do we know that he's a down priest and not a real up priest? Because when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Mm. So he was a Pharisee. Yeah, he didn't do what he... He said, thank God I'm not like that piece of dirt over there. Mm. So maybe this man is a druggie or an alcoholic or uh, this, that and the other. And uh, it took one look at him and said, no, that's, that's not going to work for me. I think I told the story once where I was preaching in a church and this gang that had been breaking up churches, remember? Yes. Came in with their chains and they were going to beat everyone up and break everything up. And uh, I said, come in, there's lots of place in the first place. And the way they sat, you know. <laughs> uh, looking at me it was it was amazing and uh one of them was baptized the leader ah. so you know we the way we treat people is very important and when he saw him he passed by on the other side and this is the condition of the world that we have today mm. some people think that uh you know they have arrived and they look down on all of these people. So I've had so many of those situations where people come into the church or a young girl comes into the church and there are so many rings through the nose and through the lip and through the ears and uh, through the eyebrows and <laughs> through the tongue that there's hardly room to put another staple. And People look at this and they say, what, did the, what came in here now into the church, right? When in actual fact, when such a person comes into the church, it's a cry for help. Mm. That's what it is. And how do you look at it? Do you look at it with uh, disdain? Or do you see it as a cry for help? No. What is that dem demoniac? Mm -hmm say when Christ stood before him. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Go away. Yeah. Go away. But in actual fact, he was actually screaming, help me. Exactly. Right? Because he kept running towards him. So this is how the world r experiences Christianity in many, many cases, or religions in general. And likewise, a Levite when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. This is the sad state of the church. Mm. If you think that you have arrived and you are on a better and a higher level, then you have forgotten where you came from. And you've gone from up to down. So 
my question to you, this fellow, this nondescript individual, mm. is he any better off than this priest or this Levite? No. They're also going down. They're all down. Mm -hmm. They're actually, at this stage, all of them are lost. Yeah. It's a very sad state of affairs. What does that tell you about the state of the church? Yeah. Sad, it has, eh? to, it has to qualify for the same. Qualifies for the same. So we have to ask ourselves, are we on the way down? Or are we on the way up? Mm. And the way we treat people will often be an indication of whether we are on the way up yes. or whether we are on the way down, right? Yes. But a certain Samaritan, now this is a very fascinating portion. Again, it is not specific. Mm. It says, a certain Samaritan. Now they were the most despised of all people. In fact, if they wanted to insult you beyond measure, they would call you a Samaritan. And they actually said to Jesus, you are a Samaritan. Samaritan. Yeah. That is like the worst swear word yeah. for which you will go to jail <laughs> these days or be incarcerated. Yeah. Okay? So a certain Samaritan as he journeyed came where he was. This That's broken person. person. Mm. Now it's very important dear Martin. Mm. He didn't go down, the Samaritan. Yeah. He didn't go up, he didn't go down. He was on a journey. Hmm? Yeah. He was on a journey. He had a mission. He was on a journey. Now, when you go on a journey, are you on a mission? Yes. All right. So this Samaritan, we don't know his identity at this stage, but he's not going down or up. He's on a mission. Yeah. And he came to where he was. That should give you a clue. Did someone else go on a mission to meet us where we were? Yes. Jesus. Yes? All right. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Did the Levite have compassion? No. Had disdain, right? Yes. The priest? Same. Same thing. But this one, who was on a mission yeah and who was despised and who wanted to meet him where he was mm. he had compassion and he went to him and then he bound up his wounds pouring in oil and wine it's a very strange thing to do right yeah very strange mm -hmm. all right so he was wounded and we are all wounded now, the only way to heal these wounds is with oil and wine. What's the oil? The Holy Spirit. Okay. And the wine? Doctrine. Huh? So what was the healing balm that could save this man's life? Bring him closer to God through the teachings of the Word. Of the Word and the Lord. working of the Holy Spirit. That's it. Okay. And then he brought him to an inn. Now, this is so beautiful. Because he brought him to an inn. Now, just cast your mind to your old life. What did you do in an inn? You eat. And? Drink. Aha. Uh -huh. And you're merry, right? Yes. <laughs> you, you eat and drink and are merry in an inn. So when you're hungry and you see an inn, that's where you go. So he brought him to an inn and took care of him. That's a very strange place to bring someone. Yeah. Very strange. So Martin, how did he bring him to the inn? On his own beast. On his yeah. own beast. In other words, he used his own implements of work and burden mm. to bring him to the inn. Now, 
this has implications for a little bit later. Now let's go to verse 35. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host. Mm. And he said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. That is the most loaded verse in this parable. And we need, we need to discuss this in some more detail. And on the morrow, that's the next day. Yes. So we're dealing with days here. Mm. When he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more when I come, I will repay thee. So in this inn, it was not only a place where you sleep, like yeah. a hotel or yes. a restaurant yeah. or a place where you can have a drink. It was also a hospital. Yes. Because they had to take care, care of, of him, him, right? They had to mm. get him well. Okay, he, was so he was still in a state. <laughs> oh no, so this is a, a church. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so... The Lord disguises it here and he says, basically, I took him to my church mm. and I said to them, take care of him. This man is wounded. Yeah. So who comes to this church? People that are wounded. Uh -huh. mm. So why is it, Martin, that when we see the wounded walk into the church and say, oh, brother, what's this coming into the church? Why is that so? Because we are like the Levite and the priest. We've become like the Levite and the priest, so we've not gone up. Mm. We've certainly gone down, right? Yes. Where did the Lord go and look for his mm. people? Yeah. Highways and byways. Yeah. Why did why did he go to the highways and byways? Because that's where the wounded are. Uh huh. So he went and he picked up this man and he said to him, You take care of him until I come. Because he says over here, take care of him and whatever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. What is this when I come again? The second coming. So he departed. And then he said, I will come again. Mm. And if you take care of him, and you spend anything more. In other words, you do more than mm. is actually required of you. Mm. I will repay you. How? By giving you crowns, everlasting uh, life. Uh, isn't this beautiful? Mm. But here's another, another clue, and I'm on very dangerous ground now. Mm. And I'll get into trouble again. But by now, Martin, that is my second name. <laughs> So let's, let's venture a little bit of uh, daring and discuss something else here. So he came on a journey. He was on a mission. Mm -hmm. And his mission was yeah, that good. one. Yeah. And he gave him oil. And wine. And he gave him wine. He gave him the truth. And he gave him the Holy Spirit. And he gave him care, and he gave him love, and he put him on his own beast of burden, which means that he walked. Mm. He didn't sit on yeah. it, right? Yeah. yeah. He walked next to it. So the king of kings put me on the beast of burden and walked next to it and carried me. He carries you. Yeah. He carried me to his church. And then he said, take care of him until I come again. And here's some money for you. Mm -hmm. Two pence. Now, a penny was one day's wages for a Roman soldier. One day's wages. So for how many days did he give him money? Two days. He gave him money for two days. Mm. That's very interesting, Martin. 
two days of money. Now, why didn't he give him three days or four days? Is two days wages enough to take care of someone who's really wounded? Well, it had to be if he gave him only two. Two days wages, then it would have been enough. Yes, because the Lord never makes a mistake, right? Yeah. Now, now, Martin, the pioneers of the Adventist church, mm -hmm. they believed in the cosmic week. Yes. Right? where a day stands for a thousand years. Now today, uh, that doctrine is not very popular. Mm. And uh, I believe that in the spirit of prophecy, we see that uh, that author also, I believe, believed in the Cosmic Week. Mm -hmm. But uh, seeing that it's not so popular today because, you know, evolution has really messed up our concept of time. And uh, to think in terms of a period of yes. 6,000 years is something that is highly problematic to many a mind in the world mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. And when I was in the world, it was equally problematic for me. But uh, if we were to allow ourselves the luxury of speculation, let's say it, that way <laughs> yeah well then uh, two days wages in terms of the cosmic week would be how much time two thousand years two thousand years mm -hmm. and if that is so then whatever way we calculate it without mentioning a day or an hour or a year mm -hmm. it must be very close yes would you agree? I agree. Okay. So, well, <laughs> let's continue and leave it there. But it is tempting to think like that. Take care of him. Mm -hmm. And whatever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell amongst the thieves? And he said, he that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, go and do thou likewise. So the only one who can demonstrate to us what it means to love your neighbor as yourself mm. is Jesus. Jesus. Uh, did Jesus die for the converted? Yes. Did he die for the unconverted? Yes. Did he die for the despised? Mm -hmm. Did he die for Zacchaeus? Yes. He died for... Did he say, today salvation has come to your house and fat little Zacchaeus climbed down from the tree? Did yes, Zacchaeus did. expect it? No. <laughs> no. That's the last thing he ever expected, right? Correct. Did the Pharisees expect it? No. Nope. They were horrified, <laughs> <laughs> right? They were horrified. So this is an amazing story. So where do we get our cue as to what it means to love your neighbor? From Jesus. Okay. Now, let me just rephrase this again. What did he give him? What did he put on him? Oil and wine. I see. On the most despised, mm. he put oil and wine on this person that was wounded in this world. What is our job? To do the same, to do likewise. To do likewise. Yeah. And to take him to the inn. Yes. How? By giving him the oil and the wine. Uh, but and how then we can carrying him there on your own beast. So... Ah. You carry him there. You must carry him there. Mm. And you must use everything that you have at your disposal. Mm. In other words, your hospitality, your vehicles, your whatever mm. it takes. Mm. Whatever means is in your uh, ability. Take him to the inn. Mm. Now, some inns... <laughs> are you know wonderful to take people to 
and some inns are rather scary places. So these days, sometimes the inn can even be your own home. Yes. Wherever you can give him oil and, and wine, wine. Mm -hmm. and bread, because that's what you will also get, get at in the, the inn. inn. Correct. And binding up of the wounds. Yes. There you must take him. Evangelism is the high calling of God. And we have to partake mm. in this. And if you bring this message of salvation, will you have enemies? Definitely. Definitely, right? Most of the time, the Pharisee and the, Le Ach, the priest and the Levite will become your enemies. They will be the most problematic in many cases, right? Mm. Uh, sometimes one wishes they would just walk by on the other side of the road, but sometimes they decide that, no, this is worth interfering with, right? Mm. So, yes, it is, a, it is an interesting question. Do we go up or do we go down? So, when we go down, let us not go down. Let us go on a journey. Yes. Let's yes. just go on a mission. Mm -hmm. Let's go on a mission to find the brokenhearted. And carry them up. And carry them up to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And put them in the inn. Amen. Thank okay. you so much.